On today's video I'm gonna review what I think is the most mythical Nikon DSLR of the 21st century, the Nikon D70. A few weeks ago I was at the photography school giving out information to future students and there was a young woman with a mother and she had a D70. And she asked if this camera was good enough to begin with. And obviously, yes, it is. And suddenly the mother said, this is the camera we got when she was born. And I had a hard time to believe that the Nikon D70 came out 18 years ago. Things were a little bit different back then. You see, we already had digital cameras, but most of them were either point-and-shoot, compact cameras, or professional, heavy-duty, pretty much expensive cameras. Nikon and Canon had uh, more affordable cameras, but they were still aimed at the professional market. There was literally nothing good quality aimed at the prosumer market. And the D70 was the answer to this. 1 over 8000 as a maximum shutter speed was only to be seen on high-end and professional cameras. This one has it. And the flash sync speed at 1 over 500 was also never seen before, even on an F5. Yes, I said the F5, not the F6, because this camera predates the Nikon F6. I mean, when Nikon came out with this D70, they were still making and releasing film cameras. This is also the camera responsible for us buying memory card readers and external hard drive. The 40 gigabyte hard drive of your laptop was not enough anymore. But when you think about it, this camera was literally the film camera killer. Look at this image and tell me that digital cameras were not good enough to compete with film. Just think about it. You don't have to pay for film and you don't have to have it developed. How cool is that? Plus, something that was cool with these cameras is that you could literally take dozens and dozens of pictures of the same subject only to select the one you prefer. And that would not even cost you a dime. Although digital film was not free, just have a look at the prices of memory cards back in the day. Those were expensive. That's probably why we spent so much time reviewing the pictures and deleting the ones we were not interested in. Image quality? Well, if you expect the dynamic range of a modern-day DSLR, you're in for some kind of disappointment, let's to say the least. And even though I was shooting raw files over here, but high ISO capability? Well, just look at this image. It was shot at 1600 ISO and yes, although it appears grainy, remember that in 2004 all we had to compare it with was film. And 1600 ISO film was grainy too. Plus you can now take a picture at 200 ISO and the next one at 1600, just at a press of a button. A lot of us bought multiple batteries for these cameras, but that was not really a necessity. The battery life on a D70 is so good, one battery is just fine. But something that you needed was multiple memory cards. In fact, if you were shooting RAW files, one memory card was just not enough. Plus, they were so expensive that you would be very careful with them and keeping them in their boxes and stuff. The sheer fact that this $1,000 camera, or well, $1,250 if you were in Europe due to the 20% sales tax, was able to produce such high quality images meant that a lot of people who were into film photography did the switch to digital. Plus, the camera was also capable of using your favorite professional lenses. And this is what I did at a concert with um, a Nikon D70 and a Nikon 35-70 to 2.8. There was no reason not to use digital anymore. The digital photography was opening new horizons to us. And the fact that Nikon was nice enough to provide us with a copy of Adobe Photoshop Elements was a nice touch. Well, I mean, it's a software you're gonna use for a lifetime. It's not like you're gonna pay for it every month. Well, at least that's what we thought. Yes, we used to do selective color. We didn't know any better, but... And so many things that digital photography made easier. I mean. Forget about my red tables and conversion filters. No, you just set up the white balance. And if you want to take a picture in black and white, well, 
just do it in post it's not really an issue plus the lens that this camera came with as a kit the 18 to 70 was an excellent performer i mean you wouldn't believe that these shots were not taken with a prime high quality lens and if you had ai lenses from an fe on an f3 you could still use them in total manual control i mean no metering but since it's digital just trial and error and fix it or use the histogram on the back of your screen so is the nikon d70 a mythical nikon camera that you should be collecting well i think it is it's the, literally the camera that made nikon the giant it is today for digital cameras but it's also the camera that made digital photography what it is today something that was accessible used by everyday people everyday photographers amateurs and professionals alike digital photography would not be the same if it was not for the nikon d70 plus there are now very cheap people are selling them for almost peanuts nowadays compared to what you would have to pay for a nikon fe or a film nikon these are really cheap and the results well they are interesting and i mean this is in the end a pretty cool looking camera i mean look at that it has this professional look and if you forget about the stamp size uh, screen on the back it doesn't look per se and the way it works is still pretty actual so that's my take on the nikon d70 as always uh, thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video hit the like button subscribe etc and i will see you next time goodbye <laughs>